Good afternoon and welcome to New Mexico Military Institute's Google Hangout to get everyone ready for NMMI. It's our back to school edition where we want to help you and your families learn more about NMMI and what the first weeks of school will bring. My name is Rhonda Rager Johnson and I am the director of the High School Academic Counseling Center here at NMMI. I often field a lot of questions for families, so we thought we would try a Google Hangout so you can all learn more about this coming school year and what you can expect on day one, matriculation day. And our recruit at training or RAC period. Now joining me tonight are two recent NMMI grads and the president of the NMMI Parents Club. I'm going to turn it over to them and ask them to please introduce themselves. Jet, Adrian, and Ron, please. Uh, hi, my name is Jet Murphy and I just recently graduated from New Mexico Military Institute. Um, I'm, I was a four-year cadet at NMMI, so I came as a freshman, um, went all the way through high school up to senior year, and then just recently graduated. Um, as a leader, a leader at New Mexico Military Institute, I, my, the highest position that I held was the command sergeant major position. So I've experienced um, all different types of leadership. I know how it works from bottom to top. I was also a member of uh, Colt Soccer. That's the high school um, sport or athletic department. Um, I played for four years, so I know what type of athletics are here at New Mexico Military Institute. And I also served as the vice chairman of the NMMI Cadet Honor Board. Um, I live in Roswell, New Mexico, and I'm going to be attending the University of New Mexico next year. Thank you, Jet. Adrian? Hi there, my name is Adrian Lopez. I graduated from NMMI in May of 2014. I am currently a rising junior at Truman State University in Kirksville, Missouri. Excellent. Thank you, Adrian. Ron? Hi, my name is Ron Fleury. I'm the president of the Parents Club out here at NMMI. Uh, I'm a resident here in Roswell, and uh, I look forward to tonight's chat. Thanks to all of you for being a part of this hangout. It is important that our incoming cadets and families get your questions answered on our hangout tonight. So if you have any questions, please feel free to post them on our Facebook page or our Twitter account using hashtag NMMI. We know heading off to school away from home can make everyone a bit nervous. So. We hope that talking through things tonight will help all of you get ready for NMMI. So let's jump right in with some questions that we're going to ask our alum. Um, and uh, I'm going to start off with Adrian. Adrian, at NMMI, there is only one core with one standard. And that standard embodies duty, honor, and achievement. How did NMMI teach you that? Well, first and foremost, we were all trained equally and disciplined equally. And we were, we were all issued the same gear, and we learned to stand on our own two feet, and our success really depended on us. Excellent. Thank you. Jet, what was the hardest part of adjusting or being at a boarding school and not being able to go home every afternoon? Um, I would probably say that adjusting to a new time schedule, um, everything's really regulated and you have to have a certain amount of discipline to carry yourself throughout the day. Very nice, very nice. Ron, the same question for you. How did you, How did you as a parent, handle letting go? Any tips for our family who are about to do this in, in August? How do you let them go? Uh, you bring your daughter a day early and you go to the Bahamas. Uh, we went on a trip, uh, so we were gone for the first 10 days. Uh, it, it's hard. You have to um, 
let your let your child go. Uh, it was the choice of my daughter to come to NNMI, and I think that made it a little bit easier. Um, but letting go of my 14-year-old to a uh, boarding school, it was rough, and especially with living here in campus every day. Um, it's rough, but you have to know that they're in a safe environment, uh, and they're not the only new cadet there. And she made some uh, fantastic rat buddies uh, that uh, get her through even now, and uh, this coming year she'll be a senior. So the uh, main thing is, is just know that you've raised your kids to be good kids. Um, let them go. It's a month. We can all get through a month, um, and just, just know that they're safe and they'll be okay. Very nice. Thank you, Ron. Now don't forget to ask questions tonight by posting on social media using hashtag NMMI. Ask our cadets and parents anything to help you get ready for matriculation day. We do have a question from Gianna on Twitter. Gianna is asking us, what do the rooms look like and are there bathrooms in the rooms? Jack, would you answer that, please? Yes, ma'am. Um, the rooms are there's two you, there's two bunks in each room, and underneath that you have a desk where you do all your homework and all your studying. Um, the bathroom itself is out on stoop, so a stoop is like a floor, so you have to walk outside and then head down to the bathroom. But there's a bathroom on each each floor, so it's not not too far of a trip. Very nice. Thank you. No problem. Well, Jack, while I, while I have you right here, would you, um, <clears throat> since you're an alum, what were the basics that you needed for your first few weeks here at NMI? Well, as far as material goods, you need, you know, basic toiletries, tennis shoes, um, you need some sleeping gear. But the more important part is that you need a level of mentality that you can make it through. You can meet this challenge. You can succeed no matter how hard it is physically, mentally, or academically. So those, those are really the basics of what you need to survive at this school. Very nice. Adrian, I want to ask you the very same question, please. Uh, well, like Jet said, you need to have a good attitude coming in. And uh, I think it's also important to take solace or comfort in the fact that everybody is experiencing the same challenges as you are. Mm -hmm. So you need to set yourself to set yourself out to you know, do as good as everybody else or better. Great, excellent, thank you. And Adrian, while you're still here with me, let me ask you this. Um, what is the one thing that you wished you had packed for Rat Week, but you didn't? <laughs> Gel implants for my shoes, because you're going to be on your feet a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Jet, and speaking of Rat Week, Talk through the challenges of being a new cadet physically and emotionally and how you pushed yourself through the tough times. Well, for the physical aspect of it, we wake up every morning at 5.30 in the morning. We go running. Um, you have to do PT or physical training. Um, you have to be able to push yourself to the limit. You know, Usually people aren't able to get past that wall, but here at MMI, you're able to do that. You're able to push past that physical and mental limits to, uh, you know, be a better person and succeed. Very nice. Very nice. We have a question from Twitter. This is Gina. And Gina is asking us, are the 21 days hard for the incoming rats? Jack, since you're up, would you go ahead and answer that for us, please? Well, I'd say they're very challenging. You had to, you had to want to be here. Um, they're not too difficult to succeed. You have to be able to push yourself to that limit. You know, even though you may think that you can't do it, you actually can. And the cadet cadre and the faculty and staff here at NMMI, you know, are able to guide you that way. So it's not like you're in it alone. There, there are a lot of people that are here to help you succeed. Excellent, excellent. Adrian, let me ask you this. Let's talk about what a lot of incoming cadets want to know, and that's about the uniform. How did you adjust to wearing to wearing that uniform? And um, can you give us some tips and tricks for keeping it 
ready for inspection. Well, adjusting to uh, wearing a uniform, you know, was, you know, definitely a change because in, you know, middle school or uh, I came here in the ninth grade, so you know, I was in middle school beforehand. And, uh, you know, the uniform is, you know, somewhat of a chore to maintain. And so you just need to manage your time and make sure that you have all the supplies you need to keep your brass clean and your shoes shined and so forth. And uh, some tips and tricks. Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, for keeping it ready for inspection, I always would keep a clean pair of brass uh, that I wouldn't use and just keep it stowed away as uh, well as a second clean pair of shoes. Mm -hmm. Very nice, very nice. Jet, would you give us some tips on how you handled your laundry here at NMMI? Well, the dry cleaner service was probably my best friend all four years. You take your, take your uniforms over there and you give it to them and then they magically come back two days later, perfect. So it, it's part of the tuition and it's a great, um, a great um, service that they have on campus. They also have a laundry service, so if you have dirty laundry, you can take it over there and get it back a few days later, perfectly folded and clean. That's excellent. That is really excellent. Remember, you can you can answer any questions. We can answer any questions you may have. So just post on social media using hashtag NMMI. We have a question from Twitter. What is the weather like in Roswell? Adrian, come on and tell us. Uh, well, the summers are pretty hot. Uh, there's the humidity isn't really that bad. It's a lot of dry heat, and you'll have days where it's over a hundred degrees. Uh, the winters are can get fairly cold. I remember my freshman year; it got down to negative seven. Mm -hmm. So you know it can get pretty cold here. So you know you have all four seasons here, really. Very nice. Thank you very much. Um, Jet, I need you to talk a little bit about the electronics policy, the technology program that's offered here at NMMI. Um, they actually just introduced this, but each new cadet is issued a brand, uh, a pretty practically a brand new laptop that they got last year. So every new cadet receives a laptop that has uh, Microsoft Word, Excel, all those basic programs that you need to get through classes and through by period at NMMI. Excellent. That sounds like a very good program. Adrian, how did you stay in touch with your family and friends, and what are some of the rules that surround that? Uh, well, during Rat Week, uh, we're not allowed to have our cell phones, so the only way to communicate with uh, people outside the school were, was through written letter. And so after the first 21 days are over, you get your cell phone back and you keep it in your room. That's the only time you're allowed to use it. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you very much. Jet, um, tell us about the best care packages you ever received at NMMI. Well, I don't think it was exactly a care package, but I would go down to the mail room to check my mail um, probably about a week into Rat Week, and I had maybe like 15 letters from family and friends so it, it was it was great reading all those and you know just sitting down after a long day and um, you know just seeing all that people cared still about us here at NMI. so it was pretty cool. You were not forgotten. Very good, very good. Again, we would love to answer any questions you may have. Tweet your questions at NMI using hashtag NMI or post your comment on YouTube. Facebook or Google Plus using hashtag NMMI. Well, Ron, let's let's talk with you a little bit. Can you share a little about the Parents Club and how parents can stay connected and in the information here at NMMI? Sure. Um, the Parents Club. Uh, a couple years ago, one of the parents came up and uh, kind of said we were the Red Cross of NEMI. Uh, what it is is. Um, every parent is part of the Parents Club uh, as long as their cadets are going here. 
And our main goal here is to interact with the students. Um, throughout the year, we do ice cream socials, uh, uh, cupcake socials with the cadets, and we intermingle. And on um, the weekends where we have Parents Weekend and stuff, we're out and present on campus so that uh, parents can uh, talk with us. We can guide them uh, to where they need to go. So we do a lot of that, but one of the biggest things that we do is um, we we answer and field a lot of questions from the parents um, on their kids. And uh, when a child needs something and you're 2,000 miles away, it's hard to get it for them for that day. So what we try uh, to do is work with the parents. So if uh, their cadet needs new shoes for basketball because it starts tomorrow and they forgot to tell us, uh, they're not stressing, the, the cadet isn't. Uh, we work it out between the parents. We get it worked out so the cadets have what they need when they need it. And uh, then the parents work it out. So we're here also to answer those questions. Uh, when the parents call us and say, Billy has said this, that, or anything, and we let them know that um, just relax, they're going to get through it, and the next time they have a telephone conversation with them or any kind of correspondence, it'll probably have changed. So we just help settle the nerves of the parents, and again, with the interaction of the kids, we give them a little bit of that uh, help with uh, that family, that feel of family so they can get away from the uh, uh, core for a little bit. Uh, ways that you can uh, stay in contact with the uh, school, join the newsletter uh, that NMI, uh, or NMI puts out um, regularly. About every few weeks they put it out. Plus the Parents Club has a uh, Facebook page and there's quite a few other Facebook pages on uh, Facebook. So go out there and join those uh, social media sites so that you can see. Uh, we post pictures of sporting events and parades and stuff for those parents that can't get there. So just join some of those because that'll help make that connection uh, because sometimes our uh, students forget to send us pictures and let us know how they're doing. So that's a couple ways that you can stay in contact with your students without uh, having them contact you. That sounds like a great information loop. Thank you, Ron. Um, and I like that ice cream social. That really sounds excellent. And the Cadet Red Cross. Awesome. Ron, can you talk a little bit about the Cadet Ambassador Program, please? Yeah, sure. The Cadet Ambassador Program is um, some families. Uh, what it was designed for was to get some of these uh, cadets out and about. And what it is is when, uh, again, when your family is back east or even in another continent, you still need that that family setting. Uh, so these ambassador families uh, are there to do functions, show them around the um, the town. Um, a lot of them take them back and forth to church and stuff. So they just give it that, that family orientation. Um, also with that same thing is the more the students are, or the longer the students are here, uh, the more involved they get with other cadets. Uh, for example, um, when my daughter would come home on the weekends, she normally had four, five, six other cadets that would come home uh, with her for the weekend, or not for the weekend, but for uh, Saturday. Um, when they do do that, you make sure that the refrigerator is stocked because they do two things when they get home. Uh, they eat and they sleep, and then they go back to the Institute. So the, the cadet ambassador family is there to just give that, um, that family setting to those cadets that um, are far away from home. Um, and if you can't get into one of those uh, families, just know that your cadets will be meeting a lot of cadets that are here locally, and they'll be able to do the same thing with their families. That is an excellent program. OK, we have a question from Twitter from Ross, and Ross is asking, is there a packing list? What other stuff that is not on the required list do they need to bring? Adrian, can you address that for us, please? Yes, there is a packing list. Um, <clears throat> when you get accepted to NMY, you will be mailed an acceptance package, which contains a list of things to bring and not to bring. Mm -hmm. Jet, anything you want to add to that? 
Um, no, I completely agree with Adrian. They'll send you a list, and it's pretty straightforward from there. Um, you just want to make sure that you have everything on that list so that you, you don't get into buying later. Excellent, and my understanding is that that packing list is being mailed out this week. Excellent. All right, let's get back to some more questions for our grads. Adrian, NMI offers a lot of ways to connect and to stay involved and active. What kind of things did you participate in at NMI, and how do you learn about these opportunities? Um. Well, I learned about a lot of the activities that I was involved in through the activity fair that's held uh, in usually near the end of August each year. And so what it is is uh, all the clubs on campus will uh, send representatives to the convention room and set up tables and information about what their program is and what they do. And so that's how I learned a lot about uh, some of the activities that I was in. Uh, which include the Cadet Ambassador Program with the Admissions Department here at NMMI and the Social Media Team, which is a component of the Ambassador Program, as well as um, uh, the Track Team, Honor Board, and a few other activities that I was in. Very nice. There are a lot of activities that are offered here at NMMI. Jet, what are some of the best places on and off post? Um, well, for on post, um, I know a lot of cadets, a lot of my friends like to go to Godfrey Athletic Center. They have a full basketball court. Um, they have racquetball courts, a uh, full weight room upstairs, um, a full Olympic-sized swimming pool. It's, it's a great facility. Um, also, people go to the game room to relax, to get coffee. And then upstairs, they have a, a grill called the PX where you can get some really good food. Um, as far as off campus, a lot of people... Uh, like going to Big D's, which has probably the best hamburgers in town, um, or Icon Cinema, which is one of the a brand new movie theater here in Roswell. Um, so those are just some some cool places to go. I like that Big D's myself. Okay, on Twitter we have Britt Jacobson. Who are the best teachers? Any tips for my freshman daughter, Jet? Um, it's kind of hard to say who the best teachers are. Um, they're all they're all really great. Um, looking back to my freshman year, I had a uh, he, he's now a major Anon Tang for for my um, algebra one class. He, he's really good. Um, I've had Colonel Martinez. She's she's awesome. She's been here for a long time and she always does well. And uh, Dr. Huckabee for freshman English is great too. If she's still teaching a freshman section, but I mean every every teacher here at NMI is is really really awesome, really outstanding, and they're always there to help you, um, especially during tutoring, during their free time, and practically any time that their office hours are open. Excellent, excellent. That help is always necessary. A question on Facebook from Maria. Have you maintained friendships? What was it like to get brand new to get a brand new roommate? And were you close to him? Um, it's kind of it's a bittersweet feeling because I just graduated. A lot of my friends went different places, um, but I mean those are the best friendships that I've ever had in my life. I still talk to them like every day. Um, the roommates that I have, I, we have like a group text message that we always just share funny stories about. Um, getting a new roommate's an interesting experience. Um, usually, I mean it, you'll get a good one hopefully, and um, even if they're not the same as you, you'll, you'll still be friends with them because you're going through the exact same stuff. And you know, the people that, especially if you come as a freshman here, those are the people that you're going to be with for four years. And when you walk across that graduation stage, you know, those are lifelong friendships and you'll never um, grow apart from them. That is beautiful. Thank you so much. Okay, we have a question from Kiko on Facebook. Is the bed twin size? Are full size, Adrian. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure it's twin size. <laughs> pretty sure it's twin size. Thank you so much. We also have a question from Jeff on Twitter. What is the in processing agenda, Adrian? That's big. Uh, 
Well, I mean, I did it back in 2010, so it's probably a lot different than what it is now. But uh, from what I remember, your your first stop will be in the Godfrey Athletic Center, and then you'll be uh, marching in between a bunch of buildings in campus and uh, just signing in with a bunch of departments. And uh, your last stop will be at the, I believe it'll be at the Deputy Commandant's office for your room key. And then uh, you'll go into your room for a little bit, and then uh, the corps will form up for their first for the first formation, and everybody will march to dinner. Very nice, very nice. That in processing, there there are so many different offices that you will get to visit um, the uh, new cadets and their parents. Um, you will have time to speak with academic advisors. Uh, as they're setting up schedules for your, your students. There are um, parent meetings with the superintendent, the dean, and um, the commandant. There's plenty that, um, for any question that families may have, or even cadets, the new incoming cadets may have, we have the answers, and we will be here, and everyone is willing to give whatever you need and to be as helpful as possible. We have another question that has come in and this is from Alisa and she is asking from Twitter what happens if during the school year that my cadet gets sick with a cold or flu? Are they able to miss school? What happens, Debt? Well, you, we have a infirmary here on campus so you go to the infirmary during sick call you sign into the infirmary, and that places you on what's called a status, which means you're allowed to miss classes, formations, because you're excused for that reason. Um, the infirmary takes care of you. You, depending on how bad your illness is, it may send you um, back to your room if it's not too severe, or you may stay in the infirmary overnight. But they have a full staff that are able to take care of any medical needs. Excellent, thank you. We also have another question from Twitter, and this is from Jeff. When can parents send care packages? Adrian? Uh, anytime. Anytime. There you go. Okay, we have another question coming in from Twitter. Jenna, she wants to know, how hard is it to advance up the ranks after the new cadet stage. Adrian? Uh, well, you're, if you're a high school student, your first year you will be a new cadet until about March or April. And so you can't, re uh, you can't really advance all that much. You'll just turn from a new cadet to a private. And then depending on how well you performed and what your cadre, how your cadre have evaluated your performance over the past year, you may be assigned a leadership position for the upcoming school year. And so it's really just all depends on how you perform your duties and so forth. On, and that's how the ranking system usually goes, as well as uh, taking GPA into account. Beautiful, beautiful. These are some excellent questions. We now also have a question from Twitter. This is Elisa, and she wants to know, when do we get our cadets' addresses and distribute to family to write letters? So when can they get the information and how soon after their cadet gets here can they start sending letters and get that information to be able to contact them? Why don't you give us an answer on that one, Jet? Um, I'm matriculating during the in-processing. You visit the post office where they give you your mail slot number. So all of that's included um, in the parents' package along with um, some papers that you receive on the matriculation day. So you'll get your cadet's mail slot number and then you can start sending letters or care packages right away. Beautiful, beautiful. That is excellent. Okay, we have a question from Gianna and this is on Twitter and Gianna is asking, are the college and high school cadets separate from each other, Jet? Um, they're separate, they're separate living, but they're split up between two platoons. Um, how it works is each cadet is assigned to a troop, which is a military unit, and that's broken even, even further down into two platoons. So you have a high school platoon and a college platoon within that troop. 
Um, so they're separated in that aspect, but a lot of the activities that you do are be amongst college and high school students so that you can um, interact with older, older cadets, um, younger cadets, and have a diverse core. Beautiful. What about the females, Adrian? Are, how are they, are, are they separated in the core as well, or how, how, do they, how are they integrated into the core? What about their living status? Are they, you know, right next door to a male, or how does that work, Adrian? Uh, the, the barracks here on campus, or the dormitories, are uh, th three floors high. And so the first floor is generally reserved for college males, the second floor is for high school males, and then the third floor is for uh, high school and college females. And so uh, that's how they're separated, and then their roommates are usually with, within their same age level, so they'll put like a sophomore with a sophomore, or possibly a sophomore with a junior. Excellent information. We have a question that has come in from YouTube from Shelly. And Shelly is asking, how easy is it for new cadets to meet and become friends before never knowing, having never known each other? Jet? Um, it's very easy considering that you're going through the exact same experience at the same time. Um, I, we both, Adrian and I came in knowing practically nobody and we left knowing almost everybody. It was odd seeing a new face on campus um, my senior year, and I'm sure it was the same for his senior year. Um, those people become some of the best friends that you'll have for the rest of your life. Excellent. Thank you so much. We have a question coming in from Twitter. The question is, what are, what are available as staples in the bookstore? If I, if I do forget something, what is there that, you know, how can they pick up their, their basic needs there in the bookstore? What's there, Jet? Um, they have everything from um, textbooks to, you know, basic toiletries. They have um, T-shirts for parents, um, sweatshirts, um, mostly the, some of the stuff that the cadets use. I mean, you go there to buy uniform items. You go there to buy um, shoe polish, um, brass, stuff to shine your brass with. Um, they have practically everything that you can need here. That's excellent. Can I get my socks there too? Sorry, ma'am? Are there socks there? Can I get socks and things like that too? Yes, you can get all kinds of socks. You can get the new cadet socks that you have and along with the dress socks too. Excellent. Thank you. We have a question coming in from Twitter. Elisa Irons, she says to us, how do I sign up for the newsletter? And this is directed at Ron. Uh, uh, you can get the newsletter by, um, boy, that's a good question. Um, if I remember right, it's through the Commandant's office. Um, and on the um, web page, there's a link for it. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the steps are to get to the link. Um, but later on tonight, I'll see if I can get my gals that uh, do my Facebook page. I'll put the links on it for you, or put the information on there so that you're able to um, sign, sign up for it so when the new school year starts out, you'll be ready to go. Excellent, excellent. That'll be great. And so they can check that and get that information and to know that, it, that if they're on the mailing list, it gets out there to them. All righty, we have a question from Martin on Twitter. And Martin says, how many hours a day should I study? That's a great question, Martin. Adrian, would you answer that for us? Uh, well, there is no one single answer for anybody. It really just depends on, you know, the difficulty of the classes you're taking. Obviously, if, you know, if you're um, a freshman in high school, for example, you're, you, there's a high likelihood that you're not going to be studying as much as a senior in high school or a sophomore in junior college. So it just depends on, you know, what your needs are and how difficult your classes are and so forth. Very good. Kind of reminds you a little bit of time management and getting that stuff together so you know how much that you really need to study. Stacy Chisholm asks us this question. Do most parents bring their college students or do they just let them come alone? Adrian? Uh, well, I, I mean, I can't answer that. I mean, it just really depends on what you... Um, you know, what the conveniences and necessities are of each of the parents and the students. So, you know, I can't answer that really. 
I think that's a good answer, what you're giving, because it's an individual uh, decision. Some mm -hmm. are, you know, some parents choose to bring their college students, and some of them allow their college students to come on their own. So it is a, it is a family decision. We have a question coming in also from Stacey Chisholm, and she says, talk about haircuts, please. Can you talk about haircuts, Jet? Um, all rats or recruited training as it stands for, um, along with uh, all, all recruited trainings have to have a zero on their head, so um, you have no hair. After 42 days, you become a new cadet, and you're allowed to have um, a half an inch on top. So that, that's the maximum. And then once you've been there for a year or two years, and you have a little bit of rank, or you're, uh, you're classified as a one or two year cadet, you can have an inch on top. But you know we do the military style haircut, where it's it's pretty short on top and on and trimmed really well on the sides. That's an excellent answer. Now let me ask you a little bit more here. Because there are female in the core, do they have to get their hair cut? Uh, no, they all females. If you have longer hair than your shoulders, you have to have a French braid. Um, after you have been there for a year, or you become a yearling cadet, as it's set, as it's classified, um, you're allowed to wear a bun. Um, a lot. Some girls have their hair um, shoulder length, um, where they can just wear it like that. Excellent. Thank you very much. We have a question that has come in from Instagram. What are the academics like for Rat Week? Rat Week academics. Adrian. Um, during Rat Week, there. I mean, the only academics that there are is, uh, I guess, Academic Academy, which is. Uh, you know, preparing, giving the students an outline of, um, you know, suggestions for the upcoming school year and how they should study and take notes and, you know, the resources that are available to them. And other than that, I mean, it's, the ac academically, it's you know, just high school, really. And I mean, that's as far as I can go. It's not really any different than the rest of the school year, just that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're restricted on how, on how you talk to, uh, you know, what, your parents or anything before the 21 days are over. Right, right, absolutely. Jet, can you give us a little bit more on also what to expect during Rat Week? What kind of things do they take you through? Um, you're starting to build a foundation for the leadership abilities that you'll build later on. Um, you pretty much are, you experience, uh, that's kind of a broad question, but you experience different athletic events, you um, start to do physical training, you go to a, a lot of meetings where you learn what exactly an MMI is, how to, how to do well here, how to advance yourself, um, how to take care of yourself pretty much. Excellent, thank you. And it was a broad question, but you did a very nice job. Thank you, Jet. Thank you, Adrian. We have a question coming in on Twitter from Kevin, and Kevin is asking us, how hard is it juggling your sport and academic load? That's a great question, Kevin. Can you give us an answer on that, Adrian? Sure. Um, well, you know, it is a pretty uh, grueling schedule. You know, you wake up in the morning, you have formation. Uh, if it's a Wednesday morning, we'll have a drill, and then you know, just your, your seven periods of classes, and then at 3.30, everybody's usually out of the barracks, and you're, you know, either at a sporting event or practice, or you're doing core PT, which is a, a abbreviation for physical training, and then, um, you know, dinner at night, or in the evening, rather, and then night study hall from 7 to 9.30, and then uh, lights out at 10, and so it is a you know, fairly grueling schedule and you just have to learn how to manage your time. Very nice, very nice. I'm going to step a little bit further into that night study hall. You just brought something up there, Adrian. Jet, can you speak to us a little bit about night study hall? Does everyone have to do night study hall? Um, night study hall is, everybody has to go attend night study hall. It's a period in time from um, 7 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. where uh, cadets are either studying in their rooms or in the library. And my, I mean, all throughout high school, I found it extremely helpful to go to the library because, you know, that's a place where it's, it's pretty quiet and, I mean, all the books are there so you can get all your homework done within that session. Um, it, it was a little bit more difficult my senior year. I had a lot more, a lot more homework and sometimes I would have to start studying at 7 p.m. and end at 
sometimes even 10, 30 or 10. But it's like Adrian said earlier, it's on that individual level, depending on how hard your classes are. Very nice. Thank you. We have a question that has come in on Facebook. This is Samantha, and Samantha is asking, what things are there to do on campus if you can't get away for a furlough weekend, Jet? Um, there's a lot of different things to do on campus. On Saturdays, we usually do different core events. Um, we have some intramurals that we do amongst the troops. Um, you can go to the gym. You can go hang out in the game room. You can hang out in your room, watch a movie depending on what the schedule is for that day. So even if you can't get away, there's always something to do. Wonderful. Wonderful. We have a question also from Jennifer on Facebook. Jennifer is asking, are cadets allowed to have vehicles on post? Adrian? If you're a senior in your second semester or if you're a, a junior college student in your second semester. And so, and then if you know if you're in the, for example, if you're in the National Guard and need to get to a drill, then you're allowed to bring it your first semester. Uh, if you're in junior college, so you know there are exceptions to it, but generally that's the rule: is second semester, senior year, or freshman, junior year. Very nice. Thank you very much. Um, coming in from Abe on twenty on Twitter, is it common for people to be sent home? And also, can you bring extra things that might take up a lot of room? For instance, a guitar, amplifier, those kind of things like that. Can they do those sorts of things, Adrian? Uh, well, an amplifier probably isn't recommended because <laughs> you live in a dormitory setting, and so as great as a you know guitarist as you might be, your neighbors might not think so. And so, uh, you know, you can bring extra things, but you also have to keep in mind the, uh, you know, the sound rules and other uh, regulations. Yes, great. Thank you very much. Facebook, we have a question coming in from Mandy. And Mandy is asking, what are the do's and don'ts of the rats during the 21 days? Jet? Well, as far as the, the don'ts, I would say you definitely don't want to um, uh, go on social media, use internet for that purpose, considering that that's against the regulation. You want it, For dues, you want to listen to um, your cadre who have been there. They've experienced the same thing that you have. They know exactly where you're supposed to be, when you're supposed to be. Um, you're also supposed to you know, manage your time. They help you get accustomed to that life. So what you want to do is have, come in with open ears, um, listen to everything that your cadre and faculty and staff are saying, and you'll, you'll do well here. Excellent, excellent. We have a question coming in on Facebook from Fuang, and it's, Fuang's question is, is there a music club where I can play violin there? Jet? Uh, yes, there is. Um, it's not exactly a music club, but they have um, a jazz club. They have the band. So if you're a violinist, you, you're assigned to the band as your troop. So you're pretty much doing everything with them. And you can play your violin during the fall and spring concerts that we have here. Yes, absolutely. And I'll add that there's some uh, practice rooms downstairs below the band hall that you can go down and practice. And also, there are independent uh, music lessons if you would like to talk with um, your advisors about getting involved in having independent music lessons. We have Steve on Twitter, and Steve is asking the question, when do the sports teams practice? Adrian? Uh, it's from 3.30 to around 5.30. And then, uh, from what I understand, uh, some of the teams uh, I know the football team, for example, last year had uh, team meetings at, I believe it was 2.40 until 3.30, and so that's generally the time period. Excellent. Thank you. Question from Jenna on Twitter. How hard is it to advance up the ranks after new cadets, and what is needed to do so? Adrian? I believe we answered that question already. 
Can you give them a, just a little bit more? Sure. Um, you know, like I said, from if you're in high school, you'll be a new cadet, which is, you know, pretty restricted from the moment you get here until uh, March or April. If you're in college, uh, you'll be a new cadet from August until December. And so your rank is really contingent on how successful you are with regards to performing your core duties as well as your academic duties. Hmm. Excellent. These are some great, great, great questions coming in. We're truly appreciating your questions. We have Paul on Facebook. Paul wants to know, are there any restrictions on which extracurricular activities rats can participate in? Jet? Um, for the most part, no. There are a few clubs that do have a restriction of you had to be here for a year, but I, mean, I would say like 95 or 90 percent of them do not have a restriction. So during that um, activities fair, you can sign up for different clubs or different activities. Excellent. Very nice. Barb on Facebook would like to know, Ron, we have not forgotten you. So Barb is asking, Ron, talk about your daughter's journey at NMMI. Wow, my daughter's journey. It has been 100% positive. Um, she went in as a 14-year-old, uh, um, pretty squared away uh, gal, but uh, now she's starting her senior year. Uh, she's turning 17 this month, or next month, and um, I wouldn't call her a young lady. I'd call her a woman now. I mean, she is uh, self-motivated. Uh, she has better time management than her dad now. Uh, it's just amazing uh, what she has done. Uh, the friendships that uh, she has made um, have been, are going to be lifelong. Uh, one of her roommates is from Hawaii, or was from Hawaii because she just graduated. Um, you know, last summer she spent her vacation during the summer in Hawaii. So she has grown as a woman, um, self-confidence. Uh, she it's just been an, an incredible uh, thing to watch over the last three years, and I'm looking forward to seeing what's going to happen this year. And uh, for the question that was asked earlier about how to get on to the um, newsletter. If you look at the Parents Club um, Facebook page, it's been posted there, so you'll be able to get on that. I don't remember the gal that asked that question earlier, but it's been posted. Excellent. Thank you, Ron. We have Jeff on Twitter, and Jeff wants to know, what fitness level do you recommend for incoming boys and girls starting as rats? Jeff? Um, well, before I came here, I thought that I would have to um, to go do a lot of extra physical fitness um, type, type things before I came. Um, I, I ran a few miles before I came and did a bunch of extra stuff, push-ups, sit-ups, and all that. But um, how, it's, how, it, how it works here is you come in and they start to build you from the level that you're at. So even the, it's, it's all based on improvement. So even if you can only do one pull-up, you know, by the time you leave here, you'll probably be able to do 13 or 10 or some, some, something, something like that. So it's all based on improvement. So you don't have to go out and run five miles every day, but they'll, they'll build you up from where you are. Excellent. That is, that's great to know. We have a question coming in from Kevin on Twitter. Kevin wants to know, also for clothing, what would I need to bring with me? Can you address that, Adrian? Um, well, if it's in regards to civilian clothing, you don't really need to bring that much because you're not allowed to you know, be in civilian clothing anywhere on campus uh, unless you sign out on furlough and you go home. Um, so there's, you know, besides that, you don't really need to bring all that much. What's in an issue? Can you tell us what's in a, in a uniform issue, Adrian? Yes, when you first get here, you'll be, uh, there's two separate issues from what I remember, and there's uh, your first issue, which will contain your PT shorts, your PT shirt, uh, a baseball hat, and uh, your wrap socks. And uh, your second issue will contain your ACUs, which are the camouflage uniforms, as well as the class C uniforms or classroom uniforms that uh, 
it's just the blue pants and the white button-up short sleeve shirts as well as the long sleeve shirts and uh, you know the, the many other uniforms that we have. Excellent. Thank you very much. We have a question coming in from Huang on Facebook. How are the parents informed of the, of the cadet's progress and academic results? And if you all don't mind, may I answer that? Go for Thank it. You. Okay. Go for it. So, as a counselor, an academic counselor here, um, there is a lot of information that is given to, to, to the parents. Um, we have dedicated counselors for every level. So, for instance, if, as, if your cadet comes in as a ninth grader, they will have an academic advisor that will take them from the ninth grade to twelfth grade graduation that gives us the opportunity to get to know the parents, to get to know the student, and when it comes time for um, applications that need to be written and letters of recommendation and so forth for college, to get them into college, we know the students that we are speaking about. There are progress reports that are sent out from the registrar's office, and so you will see the progress of your student, um, hard copies that, are, that come in the snail mail. There's also what is considered, it's, it's called self-service. You can get onto the computer and you are able to track the progress of your student on the computer, including a program that will let you see um, assignments that they have turned in, assignments that they have not turned in, and so all of that great information is there. You have open access. We have open door policy here. So if there's any questions, parents that you need to answer, you are welcome to contact us, to contact the academic advisor, to talk to the high school principal, to go up any chain of command that you need to go up to to talk. We also have the discipline side of the house, which is under the commandant's area. We have a great, great, great staff of, of folks that work over there. They will let you know at any given time the discipline, the behavior of your cadet. All of that is inclusive because we are training leaders here. You know, and I'm going to ask Ron if he'd like to maybe speak on that a little bit more because as a parent, he received information from us. Yeah, I was going to see if I could butt in and add after you finished. Uh, yeah. Um, Getting information from here is um, overwhelming at first because you guys do a great job uh, keeping us informed. Um, one is sign up for the news that the Commandant's Office puts out. Um, it has a lot of valuable information. One thing that I remind um, parents when they talk with us is become uh, really close with the TLAs. Um, the TLAs are um, here to keep track of individual students. So during the course of the year, the TLAs are your first contact to go to when you want to find out about your student. Um, they can answer some of the academic uh, stuff, just b about grades and stuff, but um, really those should be handled through the actual instructors. Uh, but if you want to know how your son's getting along in the core, um, they have uh, great information. If you want to know if your uh, what your kids are doing um, outside of the classroom, um, they know what's going on. So the TLAs are a great um, a great contact. And again, um, I've picked up the phone and have been able to talk to the commandant, um, the superintendent, General Grizzle. Uh, they do have a pretty good open door uh, policy. Um, and uh, you know, with my daughter being in the high school, um, I've talked with uh, Colonel Brick, uh, who's the principal. Um, I just called up his office, and I was in the same day. So everybody is more than willing to talk uh, with parents. So uh, don't be shy to pick up the phone, shoot an email. Uh, but uh, the people that I'd say to contact first is the TLA. Um, they kind of get you going in the right direction on who you need to talk to and where you need to address those questions, who can address those questions for you. Um, so that's what I... What Thank I you, Ron. Thank you. Um, we have a Twitter question coming in from an alum. What is your favorite memory from NMMI? And I want you to start us off, Jet, and then, Adrian, I want you to follow up with that, please. 
Wow, um, there's there's so many. I probably say that, I mean, along with graduation, um, the third class dinner was probably one of the most memorable experiences of my life. Um, all of us, all the seniors that are graduating, sit down at, at at dinner and you know we share stories, we talk to each other, have a great meal. Um, you know, it's it's just a great time and it's also one of the last times that you know we're all together. But during homecomings for the upcoming years. Um, everybody's gonna usually that ten-year homecoming mark is when everybody like shows up and it, it's a pretty cool reunion. So I'm looking forward to that, and I'm sure Adrian is also. Adrian, if you would like to go ahead and give a little information on what is your, what is your most fondest memory of NMMI? Uh, my fondest memory was uh, probably in between the ring dinner when we all received our class rings or the third class dinner because we were all together for you know, the last time before graduation. Beautiful. Thank you, gentlemen. We have a question coming in from La jo, and this is a YouTube question. Do we have to wear uniforms all the time? even when leaving campus to go home? That's a great question. Adrian, why don't you take that one? Uh, yeah, pretty much you're in uniform all the time. When you, you know, sign out on furlough and go home, then obviously you can uh, switch into civilian clothes. But other than that, you're in some sort of uniform here. Excellent answer. Thank you. We have Jacqueline coming to us off of YouTube, and Jacqueline's question is, what do you do on weekends and scheduled breaks? Jet? Um, like I said earlier, a lot of the cadets like to go um, do, do some type of recreation. We go to, go to the gym, um, go eat somewhere off campus, go to the movies, um, hang out with friends, have a good time. Um, sleeping's definitely a a big thing that everybody else does when we have time off, so um, eating, sleeping, and just relaxing and having a good time during our, our breaks are pretty much what we do. Great. Thank you very much. We have a question coming in off of Instagram. We, will we bring our own bed sheets? If we do, are they only flat sheets or one fitted and one flat? Jet? Um, no, everybody's issued um, bed sheets, um, both fitted and flat, um, during that first issue. So, uh, no. Do you get a blanket? Uh, you also get a blanket. Here, so. Do you get a pillow? No pillow. So no sure pillow. pillow. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. We have an Instagram question. Do you have to go on the zip line every year? Wow. Cool question, Adrian. <laughs> No, you can if, uh, if you want to. You can if you want to, but you don't have to. Is that correct? Correct. Thank you. Thank you. Another question from Instagram: Do students buy un Do students buy their uniforms and get haircuts before arriving, or will this occur during the wrap week? Jet. Um, well, your uniforms are paid and uh, tuition and other costs. Um, you do not need to get a haircut before arriving because the first one of the first things that you do is go to the barber shop and get a haircut uh, during your in processing your matriculation. Excellent question from Twitter. This is from Nima. Are we allowed to leave campus? Go ahead and address that, Jet. Uh, yes, you are allowed to leave campus um, after that 21 day mark. So at the 21 day mark, you're allowed to go eat somewhere. Uh, with your parents or with your friends, and then um, usually on the weekend during some type of free time or during uh, what's called general permit, you're allowed to leave campus. Excellent. Thank you. Question coming in from Samantha on Facebook. What school supplies should we bring? Notebooks, paper, pencils, etc. Packing list online has none of these items on it. Jet, you're shaking your head. Go ahead and give us an answer. Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I, I don't remember even bringing school supplies, but you definitely need to. So make sure you take a trip to Office Max or Target or somewhere. Um, pick up some loose leaf paper, 
a few binder, a few binders, maybe some spiral notebooks, pencils, pens, and um, take them with you to matriculation. Um, otherwise, you'll be buying from the the cadet store, um, having asking someone to go off campus for you, like um, someone from the parents' club or something. And it's a lot easier just to get them before you come. Absolutely, great answer. Okay, we have a Twitter question. Are you allowed to have a TV or video game system? Adrian? Uh, I believe after your first year is over, if you're in high school, you can bring in uh, a TV and a game system, and then if you're in college, after your first semester. Excellent. Very nice. Okay, we have from Diego on Twitter. Are there any shooting sports at NMMI? Jet? Um, they have an air rifle team. Um, one of my friends actually did, did that. She did pentathlon, and that was part of the, you know, part of it. So they have air rifle. Um, as far as like live ammunition, I'm I'm pretty sure they don't do that unless you're in ROTC. So um, air rifle and ROTC um, trips. Excellent, excellent. We have thing on YouTube, and thing is asking. Do I need to bring my own cello to NMMI if I join the band? Adrian? Uh, I think so. I, I wasn't in the band, so I can't really give a definitive answer, but um, you know that's the best I can do. That is an excellent question, and when it comes to cellos and violins and so forth, um, the answer would probably be that it would be best if you did bring your own instrument. The band definitely has uh, drums and all of the percussions, you know, and all of the, the, the winds and the things like that. But as far as those string instruments, you might want to bring your own. Thank you for answering that, Adrian. We have a question from YouTube. What do parents do? After after they've taken you to NMMI on matriculation day, Ron. Uh, one thing you don't want to do is cry. You want to wait till you get in your car and you drive away. Uh, but no, once you uh, drop your um, cadet off, um, that evening they'll have a march by while they're going to the mess hall for dinner. Um, I recommend you stay um, for that. Um, and then after that, I recommend that you head on home um, because, like I say, I'm not sure who it's harder on that first day, the parents or the cadets. Um, but the one thing you don't want to do is stick around campus so that the cadets see you and they're paying more attention to you. You want to break those strings as clean as possible so that it becomes easier on your cadet. Remember, when you're going home, uh, you're going home with your spouse and possibly other kids, um, so you can fill that void. Uh, when your cadet is here, they have to make those friends and um, start assimilating into the core. And it helps if they don't catch eyes of mom and dad around. Um, so I would recommend that you uh, head on out. If you're not here, um, locally, um, you know, we have the Carlsbad Caverns that you can go uh, join, or not join, but go and look at. We have the UFO museums here, uh, Rio Doso, so there are some things in the local area that you can go take in, uh, but the main thing is uh, after that march by in the evening uh, when they head off to the uh, mess hall, um, you pretty much need to go home uh, so that uh, they can start getting into their routine. Thank you, Ron. We have a question from Facebook. When will the schedule for 2015-2016 be available? And that's one that I'm going to answer. The schedules are being work, worked on right now. Um, the high school counselors are in and out through the summer, and you, as new cadets, you start to receive what's called a choices letter from each of us, depending on what class level you are. And we're asking the different choices as far as five solids, and your five solids are like your English, math, social studies, science, 
and a foreign language or communications or something along those lines. And so you'll get that from us. We start corresponding with you quite a bit. We sit down and we start working on your schedules. Once you get here, you're given a math placement exam. We need to make sure that we have you placed correctly in math. That's very important. And so schedules are handed out once you get here. We make sure that we give parents a copy of the schedule and something that we call a four-year plan. Now, some of our cadets come in as juniors. Some of our cadets come in as seniors. So you're like, well, what's a four-year plan? Well, a four-year plan will show every all the high school work you've done from ninth grade to twelfth grade graduation. So it gives a progression on what classes are needed next. And we put a lot of thought into that because we're listening to you tell us where you want to go to college. That's the whole process. That's what we're, we're pushing you for is to make sure you get to the college or university of your choice. College readiness. So as we work through it, we're keeping in mind the, the end result. What is it that you want? So as we set up your classes, even though there are requirements, the ones that are required for graduation, there are also there's also room for electives. The unique thing about NMMI is that we have a college right here on campus. So as we're setting you up, we can do dual credit. We don't have to send you off campus to some other college or university, we have it right here. And our teachers, our professors, we have the PhDs, we have the Masters Plus, and so you're getting the best of the best right here at NMMI. So the schedules coming out soon, you'll see them when you get here. Any changes we need to do, we tweak them quickly and make sure that you are progressing the way that, need, that needs to be for where you want to go. We have a question coming in from Facebook. Is the supervision and reporting the same for high school and junior college? Why don't you answer that for us, Jet? Um, supervision and reporting in the respect of who's in charge of your cadet? Is that for clarification? I, I think I would kind of read it like that. Um, supervision as far as you have TLAs, you have okay. SLAs, is that supervision the same for high school and for college? Uh, yes, it, it's the exact same. Um, the main supervision of your cadet is going to come from the cadet cadre or the leadership. Um, there's a whole chain of command that's established for that. Um, those leaders are chosen at the end of each year and um, chosen for a particular position based on their experience, like Adrian was saying earlier. Um, there's also adult supervision. Um, they're basically the advisors to the cadet leadership, and they oversee um, the cadet leadership along with your cadet and handle, um, you know, more personal matters, you know, administrative stuff like that. And those are the troop leadership advisors or the TLAs, um, along with the squadron leadership advisor, the deputy commandant, and the commandant. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, we have a question coming in from Facebook. Should a junior college cadet start talking to the advisor before matriculation day to get an idea on his scheduling, major, etc.? And I will go ahead and answer that. The answer is yes, you should. And you start actually with the registrar. So if you look on our, our website, you will see the link to the registrar's page. And so you will see uh, major... Uh, Chris Wright, and he is our registrar. He will listen to what major you are anticipating, your concentration and so forth, and he will set you up with the correct advisor. Now is the time to get in touch. If you have been accepted, go ahead and get in touch with the registrar so that he can get you assigned um, to an academic advisor. Okay, we have Stacy on Twitter. Stacy would like to know, can the student call their parents on their cell phones? Adrian? Yes, after the 21 days are over. And in your room. Excellent. Simple as that. Yes. Okay, Twitter. What was your biggest fear about coming to NMMI and how did you push through this? I'm going to ask you both that question, Adrian. And Jet. So, Adrian? Ah, well, <laughs> my biggest fear about coming to NMMI is that uh, 
I would fall behind because I, you know, I came here when I was 13 years old, so I was, you know, pretty young coming in, and so I guess just that falling behind everybody else. Um, physically, I wasn't worried so much about academically, but physically, but it never came to fruition, thankfully. Jet, would you go ahead and answer that same question, please? I mean, it was somewhat along the same lines. Every, I mean, when you enter a new environment, usually people are nervous going into them. Um, you, people that are going to college or going into high school have the same exact feelings no matter where you go. Um, going to this school, it's it's an elite school, um, I guess for lack of a better term. But you, my my worry was that I, I would also fall behind or. You know, I wouldn't be good enough to keep up with everybody else, but like Adrian, that, that idea or that fear fell through, so. Very nice. Thank you. We have a question from Fing Lu on YouTube, and the question is, what is the hardest part during, during the 21-day rat training, Jet? The hardest part, I say, is just keeping, you know, pushing yourself through. Um, you have to attend a lot of meetings. You have to keep yourself physically strong. Um, they're they're breaking you down so that you can be built up. Excellent answer. Excellent answer. Adrian, why don't you tell us? Um, you know what? I'm going to answer this next question. The next question says, "When is the matriculation day?" And that is coming up on August the sixth and August the 7th. So letters will be coming out very soon, packages coming from the Commandant's office with more information in reference to matriculation day. So it's coming up and it's coming up soon. And actually if I count it right, it is six weeks from today. So get ready and we're ready for you. We're going to go ahead and wrap up now. And I'm going to ask for the final thoughts from our alumni. Jet, what are you doing this fall? And how did NMI prepare you for the next step of your journey? Um, next year I'll be attending the University of New Mexico. Um, my major will be biology, and then I'll hopefully pursue a career in the medical field. So I want to attend medical school and then later on specialize. Um, NMI has allowed me to become a better manager of my time. My leadership skills have been built up um, from my freshman to senior year. Um, academically, I know I'm prepared for college, and I, I know Adrian feels the exact same way, too. Excellent. You're going to do a great job. Adrian, are some of the things you learned or took away from NMMI that you used in this last year, would you tell us what are some of those things? Uh, sure. Um, I'm a uh, double major in political science and economics, so I'm having to take uh, a lot of you know fairly difficult classes, and so time management is one of the most important things to me. And so I'm having to you know prioritize which assignments need to get done first, you know which deadlines are coming up, and you know having a certain degree of self-discipline and uh, self-confidence in myself to get all these assignments done. Thank you, Adrian. I'm going to give a, a just a small correction on uh, matriculation. If I said the 6th and 7th, let me straighten that up real fast. Matriculation is actually the 5th and 6th of August, so again, it's coming up quick, so get yourselves prepared. We're looking forward to having you here. Well, that's it for tonight's Google Hangout. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you, Jet. Thank you, Adrian. Thank you, Ron, for being a part of our discussion. And thank you to all of the families who joined us for our Back to School Hangout. If you want to ask more about heading to NMI, please follow us on social media. You can connect to all of our channels from our homepage, www.nmmi.edu. And if you have any additional questions, you can also email us at admissions at nmmi.edu. Thank you to all again, and good night.